Okay, so I use all three operating systems now at the same time. And it's no virtual machines, there's no WSL2, no, none of that business. I literally have a Hackintosh or, or a Mac, uh, a Linux box, and a Windows box for mainly game streaming is what I use the Windows box for. None of them are virtual machines, I wanna reiterate that. And before we start out on each one of these desktops and I show you kind of my setup here, I want to just take you out. I'm going to grab my GoPro, spin you around, and just kind of show you how I'm interfacing with all three because I have a stream PC over here, I have this bottom PC, and then I have the little Hackintosh up top. And how I interface with all three, they're, they're three monitors hooked up to three different PCs. They're all running Barrier. I've already done that video. I'll link it in the title card here. So if you have multiple PCs and you only want to use one keyboard and mouse and you have a monitor for each one, Use Barrier, it's amazing. You don't have to have multiple keyboards and mice just laying around, It that just stinks. So uh, with all that said, let's jump out <laughs> of this uh, frame and just kind of spin you around so you can see the setup. And then we're gonna jump on the desktop of Linux, Windows, and Mac. All right, so I wanna take you through the actual setup here. And I'm actually going to put you up on this uh, computer back here and give you kind of like a bird's eye view real fast, just so you can see. As going up on the thing, you can see it moves between all of my systems. So I can get all three of this. With, uh, this actually doubles as my Windows PC because this is a game stream stream as uh, and I just use it it's not a VM but it's actually a full-on Windows PC and then uh, obviously the Mac PC up here which let me get back into my Linux and you can see all of them have access and I can launch whatever I need from all of them I can even copy and uh, copy and paste but I at least wanted to show this outside of the actual stream PC uh, and then let's jump back on the desktop but I just wanted to give you a, a good idea, not pull the wool over your eyes, so to speak, and actually show you what I'm doing. All right, we're gonna start out on the Linux PC. I'm using Awesome Window Manager, and the reason why I love Linux so much as a daily driver is its tiling window manager, and just, if you can think it up, you can do it on a Linux box. You can modify anything you want. Every single system uh, tool, you can just change, so it's, a hobbyist dream. So I have all my workspaces on the left here. Uh, this is my browser. This is my terminal. This is my chat, which I don't really have anything in. Um, usually I do WeChat. The little game controller takes me into the Windows desktop, which we're going to come back here in a second. Uh, this uh, folder right here launches right into, you know, I can do multiple uh, folder, move things around really easily. And I'm just using hotkeys to navigate. This is my music. Usually I'll launch like Spotify or something like that if I'm, I wanna jam out a little bit. And then I have just, uh, you, usually I'll launch into like Caden Live, do some video editing, those types of things directly in here. So this is my main daily driver for the Linux section. Uh, everything's kind of just done with hotkeys. I rarely get into the menu to launch into anything. Uh, the thing about window managers is there's no real system utilities unless you install them. So. Everything here is pretty much custom. I do all my modifications using a Lua file. So if you're interested in that, I have the GitHub project material awesome theme, I think is what it's called. It's on uh, github.com forward slash Chris Titus tech. Uh, that was forked from Hikari Knight. He's a community member. Uh, he runs a discord now, the Terminal Cafe. And you know, he's a great guy, he's very knowledgeable. And he actually does a lot of PCI pass through. So if you ever have any PCI pass through questions, he is the, the expert on PCI pass-through. He's a fantastic guy. But it, it, that's where I got this theme from. And if you go into the .config directory, there's a .config and awesome. Right now I have it linked up because I'm sharing this between a whole bunch of different Linux boxes I have. And the configuration just kind of is all in here. Typically the only things I changed from the fork from Hikari, uh, which he forked it from the original creator, is the apps one usually i'll change the browser to vivaldi my editors gedit which i'll probably change that to like gvim or something um discord for social and then files i change to nautilus and then i just run some miscellaneous apps down here these are kind of like your auto starts so i do like flame shot synology drive 
Steam. These are things I've added. But if you didn't want to run these, you could easily just go through and uh, remove them. So you don't necessarily need that, but I just thought I'd show it. As that's how I configure it. And then the other thing I configured in here is obviously the, just the global hotkeys. Um, changing these around and just making them launch into whatever I want so I can easily get around my system. But that's my Linux setup. Now my Windows setup is not nearly as complex, of course, because there's just not as much you can do in Windows. So Windows, it's pretty darn bare bones. I stripped out pretty much everything. I still have the Windows Store just because I do sometimes videos on like Terminal or WSL. You've seen some of those videos, but you'll see a lot of games and game launchers is if a buddy calls me up, wants to play Modern Warfare or something with easy anti-cheat, I need to be able to play that game. And uh, this gives me that. So I, I have all that. I have like my Windows terminal, so I can actually jump in here and, and do things if I wanted to. Oh, and I, I'm so used to using my Linux hotkey. I actually did that. This is actually the game stream client. I've actually made a video on this, which I'll link up here. Uh, it's using NVIDIA chipset in the Windows PC, and all I'm using is the open source Moonlight project to connect to GameStream. So I usually just launch Call of Duty, and then I just get in here and I can actually just modify Windows, do everything I need. Couple tweaks here, of course, is like Windows Update, changing that around, which uh, I've done all of the restrictions on updates where I wait four days for quality updates and then 365 for feature updates. And then I'm on the branch readiness level of 20, which basically means the stable branch. So basically enterprise level without actually having to use LTSC as uh, most people pirate that, which I really don't like. And uh, I don't ever pirate Windows myself. So this is my Windows setup. Not a whole lot to say here. Uh, I do obviously bloat this or de-bloat this down. I think I still have like 100 processes running. Yeah, about 116. You can definitely bring this down further. On a future video on Windows, I probably will be going over services as this is something I've actually haven't de-bloated on this system at all as I, I just have everything stock. So I have a lot of Windows services and I could cull this down, probably get it around the 40, 50 process range once uh, going through services and taking some stuff out. So look for that future video as well. I don't have anything on that. Uh, as back in the day, I remember using Black Viber guides on like XP and that really opened your eyes to what you can do with minimizing Windows. So with that, I'm gonna jump over onto the Mac now, which that's on my other monitor, so let me switch real fast. And we're on our Mac PC, and I just move right in and out of both because they sit on top of each other, so now I can see my Mac PC. Now this is just a traditional uh, Hackintosh, which I've done on High Sierra. This is because it's a really old PC. I'm running uh, actually that top 1U, uh, it's a really obscure Intel hardware, but uh, I was given it and it was used to run like a PBX system. So it was sitting in a server rack and I decided to throw some Hackintosh on here. A little bit more difficult and challenging to set up, which that's going to be Monday's video where I go over that entire build process. I can go easily into like software update. I've already run all the security updates for it. I can update this as much as I want. It's not going to break on me. Uh, obviously probably go into like Catalina or something probably would break it and probably run like a dog on the latest version since it's such old hardware. But overall, it's really snappy. I can do all the things I want to do with it, obviously. Um, no real issues with what I have. I mean, I can come in and out of here. I, I went ahead and threw Steam on there. I don't know why. Just to just because, I guess. <laughs> just because I could. And, you know, I just pull up each one of these. Uh, obviously, I removed animations and some other Mac aesthetics I really don't like. But for those Mac videos, uh, I'll do probably. Uh, I wanted to have this available. And, you know, one thing I will say about the Mac, it is pretty, you know. <laughs> so uh, this is my my entire Mac setup. Uh, as far as the reboot re boot and all that time, I'll go ahead and do that. I still haven't uh, prettyfied the boot process as I still was m doing a lot of updates, but I, at the end of the day, it's been a very long day where I've kind of gotten this whole three OS setups going. Here's just the kind of a little tidbit of what I've done during the boot process. So you'll get to see the shutdown and restart. All right, so you see this is a 2012, so actually eight year old PC. Uh, you'll see the entire boot process. Open core menu, I have that at a timeout of five seconds. Uh, I did that just for testing purposes. 
Uh, obviously, verbose mode is still on, so it's still showing everything that's going on. I use this to troubleshoot everything, get it just right, you know, uh, as you want a fast boot. A lot of people don't like Hackintoshes because they think they don't boot right, and that's because they set them up wrong. So, uh, obviously, I'm already on the desktop. Immediately, I just talked, what was that, 30 seconds? I, I don't even know. It's fast. It's an eight-year-old PC. And the whole reason... I did this was just to kind of take the Linux ethos is you can take a 10 year old PC and make it functional. And then the Windows ethos is just throw hardware at it. And Mac is like this weird in between. And I thought, you know what? I've seen Hackintoshes evolve enough now that I can put some time and effort in and show people you can use an eight year old PC and have it really functional like this one. So that's that's gonna be probably Monday's video going over this entire setup. Uh, but I wanted to show the three PCs. That is Mac, Windows, and Linux, all running side by side. And technically you didn't see the stream PC. That's my Linux box right here, which I didn't actually remote into because it's ultra wide. It'd be kind of funky to share the desktop. And uh, I usually just have it up going all the time as I, if I wanna do a recording, I wanna live stream, whatever it is, on my Linux PC, I, I love it. That's also another future thing where I think everyone's gonna be using Linux stream PCs in the future. Once you get them set up, they just work. You never have to worry about anything. And there's so much power in that. As a lot of people on YouTube have entire teams of people running around. And honestly, when you have it all set up in a static environment like this, a Linux PC will make it work every single time. That's why I have it, actually two Linux PCs uh, right here on top of the Windows and Mac. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts. Am I just crazy or do you think it's kind of cool? Let me know in the comments below. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.